In this video, I'm going to show you how to add these little green cubes so that you can visually and dynamically draw your current A star grid, which is just super helpful when you're trying to debug and make sure your pathfinding system works correctly. We'll continue to use this system in the next video when we dynamically add obstacles that update our pathfinding system on the fly. Let's get started. All right, so it's actually pretty easy to add uh, just some basic debugging. Really, I think what's gonna be best and the easiest thing to do is just add a little mesh, probably just a cube, honestly, at each point in our A-star grid, just so we can visibly see what our grid is. We're also gonna be able to do a little bit of coloration too, I think, just so that we can tell when a a star point is or is not connected to another. So it's not going to be foolproof, but it'll be enough, I think, for us to see just at a glance, okay, our A star grid looks the way we expect and it's all connected at least mostly the way that we need it to. So it's in order to do that, I think the first thing we should do is let's create a new function. And I'm going to do this after connect path. You can do it wherever you want, but this is going to be a new private function. And I'm going to say function and I'll say create nav cube. And again, this is just going to be our debugging. And so I'll say position. This is going to be a vector three. And let's create this function first, and then I'll go back through and we'll we'll kind of call it throughout our A star building. But again, what I want to do here is just create a new nav mesh. And for some of you, you might just know that you can create actually nodes entirely from code. You don't even need to have a pack scene. We can create nodes and resources just entirely from code. So we're not even going to need to like create a scene or anything, which is really nice for purposes of this. So what I want to do first though, before we get into this function is actually add a export variable at the top. That'll just be a Boolean because this debugging, I only want to do if we explicitly set the debug flag in the editor and I want to make this an export so that we can toggle it on and off quickly within the editor just for debugging purposes. So let's say export and this will be a boolean and we'll say variable should draw cubes. Let's default it to false here and that'll just be our default value and then we'll have to explicitly toggle it on in the editor so that we can see our cubes. Okay so now that we have that then let's come into our create nav cube function and here we will say First, if should draw cubes, because only want to do this if we will draw the cubes. Don't you love it when code is just <laughs> easily readable and obvious? All right, so what we'll say is variable cube, and we'll just say mesh instance dot new. And if you remember, even by just going to our ground here, we have a mesh instance, and that's just the name of the type of node that holds mesh data. And again, we can add this from our editor window up here, but we can also add it from code because everything we can add here is a pack scene, just like the scenes that we create ourselves. It took me a long time, at least me personally, to realize that you could do this. So I want—I always love showing this because it's a really nice and powerful feature of Godot. So we can just create a mesh instance right from code. And again, this is just creating a new mesh instance resource. It's a pack scene. We're not actually instancing it yet, but we will in a second. And now that we've got this cube here, what we can do is say cube.mesh. And again, this is gonna all line up with, if I click, click one of our mesh instances in the editor, you'll see that we have a mesh property here. So this is what we wanna set. And similar to the options we get when we click this, if I go to A star, I can say cube.mesh equals cube mesh dot new. And again, a cube mesh is just what I'm using right now for the ground here. If I hover over this, you'll see that, well, maybe you won't see, but here we go. Yeah, all these options here. I just selected this cube mesh and it's just the default value. So if I come into A star and I we're creating this new cube mesh here, and then what we can do from here, now that we're actually creating our mesh instance and adding a cube mesh to it, we can just set the size, set the color, and then add it to our scene tree. So in order to do that, what we'll do next is let's set the side. So I'll say cube.mesh.size, and I'm gonna use a vector three for this because that's what size is, just a vector three of the, basically the size or the X tense in every direction. And let's do 0.25 for all of these. It'll just be a cube with a width and height and depth of 0.25. So it'll just be a cube. It'll be even on all sides. And then what we're going to want to do now is I had mentioned I want to show uh, green probably if this is a point in our A star grid that is connected. It's not just out there on our own. And if it's a point in our A star grid that is not connected, something's gone wrong in our connecting points. We've never actually 
set it correctly, I want it to be red. And so what we're gonna do is default it to red and we will wait to color it green until we have explicitly connected it. So what we'll do then is say cube.material override, and there's a lot of different ways to set materials in Godot 3D, which I'll be honest, I'm not actually totally sure all of the times that you should choose one or the other, um, but material override is definitely the override for coloring. So that's what we'll use here. So we'll set cube.material override to be spatial material. Again, we can create everything you see in the editor in code that new. So we'll create a new spatial material. And what I'm actually gonna do, because we're gonna be creating this cube mesh and the mesh instance a ton of times, is I'm actually gonna save our cube mesh and our spatial material up top so we can just use those whenever we need. So I'm gonna create new one, new uh, variables here. I'll say variable cube mesh, and this is just gonna be cube mesh dot new. I'll say variable red material, and this is just gonna be spatial material dot new. And I'll copy this for our green material. And then what we can actually do is in our ready, we can adjust both of these materials to make them the correct color. And so what I can do is say red material, the albedo color, and just set this to color dot red. And then we'll do the same for our green material. And the reason I wanna do this in ready and I wanna save these materials to reuse is just because it'll take a ton less memory and will visibly impact the performance of your game. You, if you have got a good computer, you might not realize this, but on my MacBook, having only using a couple materials and only using one mesh that you're then instancing a bunch of times totally saves on the performance. So this is just a little factor that's gonna make your debugging less consequential for your game. So we'll just set our color of our green material to be green and our red one to be red. And now all of our materials are set up and good to go. Actually, let's do our cube mesh. We were adjusting its size down below. Let's say cube mesh dot size. And then we'll set this to be a vector three. And we'll do just what we did before, 0 0.25 for all three directions. And now when we actually add, oh, oops, need a comma there. Okay, cool, got that error gone. So now when we actually add our cubes to our game, we won't have to do any of this. It'll just work by default. So what I can do then is come down here. I don't need this mesh.size anymore. And I don't need the material, or for the material override, instead of creating a new spatial material, I can just set it to be red material. And then all I have to do is just say add child cube. And so you'll notice this script is on our A star node, right? The spatial that we added for our A star. So it's gonna be adding all of these cubes as children of our A star node, which I think is fine. We don't have any other children of our A star node, so it's not like they're gonna get conflated for anything else. If in your game you're depending on your A star node or pathfinding node having certain children, this might mess it up, so you'll have to change it. But for our purposes, this is totally fine. We'll just add our cubes as children of our A star node. And now if I run our game, well actually we haven't, we've created this function, but we're not actually adding any cubes. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. Also, we're passing a position in here and we need to actually set our cubes position to be that position. So first let's say position, dot y and we are going to set this to be grid y because we want it to just be aligned with our grid and this is something we did in our previous video where no matter what point we came in we were always trying to have a consistent y value and again if you've got different y values in your game it shouldn't be too hard to change that you you might just want to omit this line and so the next line we'll do is we were just setting the y of our position here but now we're actually going to set our cubes global transform its origin to be a 3d point in world space that we've passed in as our parameter position and to do that it's just going to be cube dot global transform dot origin equals position just like that super easy so this function is going to create a new cube it's going to use the me oh oh that's another thing i totally forgot this cube mesh here too we add we added this as a variable up top so i can say cube mesh okay so this function is going to create a new cube it's going to add it to our game at the correct position as a child of our a star node now we just have to actually call this function. And so what I'm going to do then is we wanna create a cube whenever we add a point. So I'm gonna call this create nav cube function whenever we call the add point function. Works out very well. So we'll just say create nav cube. And for this position here, thankfully we're already taking in a point. So I'm going to just pass in points just like that. And I guess we don't technically need to sanitize our Y value to be a consistent Y across the grid because we're already doing that in add point. But again, just to be safe, I'll do that in our create nav cube function as well. 
but now we're going to be adding a nav cube whenever we add a point to our game. I should actually be able to run this now and see in action. It won't update to be green when our paths are connected, but we can at least see the cubes being drawn. So let's try it. If I select our A star node, remember we've got to set our export variable here. Don't forget to do that or you'll think it is not working. So let's set that to be true. And if I run our game, we should see a bunch of red cubes. And there you go, that actually looks excellent. It looks exactly what we wanted. And you'll notice that they're aligned correctly and set up perfectly. My grid step right now is 1.0, but if I change it to 0.5 or to 2.0, you'd see that these cubes would adjust appropriately. And what's super helpful is that it just shows us what our grid looks like. And you'll notice that if I click anywhere, the place that our player actually rests at is the nearest cube. So if I click here, I'm not actually going right to that point. I'm going to the nearest little cube here, the nearest point on our A-star grid, which is very excellent. But now what we want to do is actually adjust these to be green when they're connected to give us a bit more debugging feedback as developers to say, hey, your grid is working as you expected. So let me close out of this. Let's go back to our A-star. And of course, because we want to set this green when we're connecting our points, we're going to be actually doing that in our connect points function. Now, this might be a pretty difficult thing to do normally. Like we're looking at a point here and it's neighboring points, so we might have to find their cubes that match the given coordinates, but we can actually do something that's a little hacky and a little dependent on the order which, with which we add points to our grid to actually save a bunch of time here though. So you'll notice that our points, our point IDs go up in ascending value, right? Because this get available point ID function just returns an ascending sequence of integers. And if I run our game and we just look at what our IDs equal, so it's zero, and then if I go to the next one, it'll be one, etc. And if you look at the coordinates, it's going, our X is staying the same and it's our Z that's increasing. And whenever we get to the end of our Z, then our X will increase again. So we can be reasonably sure of the way it's our the way our a star grid is incrementing it's going up the whole gamma of z values and then it'll move to the next x f value go through all the z values again etc and each time our id is incrementing by one so we can actually use this information to infer what order that our nav mesh cubes our little debug cubes are going to be added as children of our of our a star node and use that to our advantage and so what we can do to save some time here in our connect points function is we can add a new line and first we can say if should draw cubes because again we only want to do this and care about this if we should draw the cubes and you'll notice that we are already getting our current and neighbor id from when we're looking at all of our potential neighbors from a current point and seeing if we should connect them and remember we know that we are adding children adding our nav mesh cubes as children of our a star node in the same order that our points are incrementing our ids are incrementing so again this is a little hacky but it relies on a common it relies on the fact that we're consistently adding points the same way we can actually just use our current id and our neighbor id we can assume that these match up these ids match the index of the child that our nav mesh cube is for the corresponding point. If that doesn't make sense, let me say it one more time. The child index, basically what number child our nav mesh cube is of our A star node that lines up with the given point, the index of the matching nav mesh cube is the same value, the same number as the points ID in our A star grid because of how we're adding them. And so what we can do then to take advantage of that fact, instead of trying to do some fancy math here, we can just say get child, and this is a child of our A star node, so we're getting in a nav mesh cube here. So we can do get child of current ID. And remember, we wanna mark our current and neighbor ID cubes here. We wanna mark both of these points as successfully connected to our grid, so we wanna color them green. So I can say get child here of our current ID, which will get the cube for our current point we're looking at. And I can get the material override for this because we can assume we know that this is going to be our cube. I can get the material override and I can just set it to be green material. And I can actually copy this line too and do the same thing for our neighbor ID. And so both our current and our neighboring point that we're currently looking at and we just connected, we're gonna set them both to be green. And now to see if this works, I can run our game and we'll see that all of a sudden, all of our points are green. It all works out just like that. And this is a really nice way to tell us, 
hey, not only did you construct your grid and not only here is this grid visually represented, but look, all of these points have been connected exactly as you would expect. And when you try and move around and get a path, it's gonna be a path that you would expect to get because of the value that you selected. And if I click around, we can tell that that's certainly the case. And this is gonna be really valuable, not just in this video, but in the next video, when we add dynamic collision updating to our game, these cubes are gonna be really helpful because whenever we add a new obstacle, we can update their color. And so that is gonna be even more valuable than it is now because it'll dynamically show us what our current potential and possible and even connected points are and when a certain point becomes disconnected or disabled. So anyway, I hope that this has been a helpful video in expanding and debugging your own A-star pathfinding system in Godot 3D. If it has been helpful, a like and subscribe to support the channel are always appreciated. We'd love to have you in our Discord server also. The link to that is in the description below. And if you do find my work helpful, you can always donate a coffee to me on Buy Me A Coffee. Link to that also in the description. Thanks so much for watching everyone. See you in the next video.